All right, today's video is about price elasticity. Um, I know a lot of you guys are business students and have probably taken classes on price elasticity, but we're gonna look at it from a calculus perspective. So how we figure out the price elasticity is that we have a very crazy equation, which um, I've always called this new. Uh, I'm assuming that still is new. It's an N with a longer tail, so to speak. And what we have to have is we have to be given our demand function P. And if we have our demand function P, we can build this P divided by X and then take the derivative of it and create this pretty funky equation, to be honest. Now, what we're gonna do with it is that we're gonna be told that X is a number. So X is 50, X is 10, X is 1,000, whatever X value we care about. So when they give us that X, I'm gonna plug it in. Once I plug it in, I'm gonna see that this whole thing is gonna turn into a number. So I wanna know what number do I see? So that number, we're gonna take the absolute value of, okay? If I get the number one, that means that at that X value, we have unit elasticity. If I get a decimal that's smaller than one, that means that at that X value, it's inelastic, the price is inelastic. And finally, if I get a value that's greater than one, it means that the price is elastic at that spot. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a problem and I'm just gonna make up a P and an X. So here we go. So um, I'm going to have a demand function and let's say that that demand function is negative 0.2X plus 10. And let's say that at the end of this, I wanna find the elasticity um, when X is 20. Okay, all right, so the very first step that I wanna do is when I look over at this equation, the top is the demand function divided by x. So let's figure out what that is. The demand function divided by x would be negative 0.2x plus 10 all over x. Now we could try and rewrite this if you wanted to. So um, one way that you could rewrite it is you could divide each piece of the top by x. So if you liked, you could rewrite this as negative 0.2 plus 10 over x. So it's up to you if you want to write it this way or if you want to write it this way. It's really just kind of what you prefer. Okay. The second piece of the puzzle is this bottom is saying find the derivative of p with respect to x. So this is p prime. Okay. So if I go to this function and I ask myself, well, what's p prime? P prime is just negative 0.2. Okay, so I'm gonna write that. P prime is negative 0.2. Okay, now we're gonna put it all together. And putting it all together means I'm gonna take this piece and divide it by this piece. So new is negative 0.2 plus 10 over X divided by negative 0.2. Okay, so what I have if I, is I've built my function. Now I'm supposed to plug in the x value, take the absolute value, and then make a judgment. Okay, so my x value that I was given was x is 20. Okay, so when x is 20, if I plug that in, I'm gonna get 10 divided by 20 is 0.5. So negative 0.2 plus 0.5 is 0.3, divided by a negative 0.2 we're gonna end up with a negative 1.5, okay? Now, what I'm supposed to do with this is I'm supposed to take the absolute value of it. So the absolute value of it will turn into a positive 1.5, okay? Still with me? We finally get to make a call on this product to see if at x is 20, given this demand function, if it's unit elasticity, inelastic, or elastic. So here's 1.5. Is 1.5 equal to one, less than one, or bigger than one? Bigger than one. So what's happening is that for this case, for this demand function and x is 20, we have found that the item is elastic at that point. All right, good luck. 